worldwide. worldwide. From the streets to the yard, to the, yard. <laughs> to the boulevard, gangster planet. Well, I write y'all. <laughs> All across the USC, Compton, Watts, Bay to LA. From on to California, from valley to valley, we represent that killer county. So if you keeping it real on your side of your town, you tune in to Gangster Chronicles. Gangster Chronicles, we gon' tell you how we go. If I lie, my nose will grow like Pinocchio. We gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Gangster Chronicles, this is not your average show. You're now tuned in to the real MCA Big James and Big Steel. I'm going to hold it down with one of my favorite guests of all time. Kind of notorious in his own right, Mr. Sammy the Bull. My man. I know him still, and uh, this is the second time I'm around, and uh, great guy, and uh, I'm looking forward to the interview, and uh, we'll see what happens. For sure, man. For sure, we will have us a good time, man. We go ask some of these questions, man. We got, I had like a thousand people send me questions for you, but I got my own shit I want to ask you first, all so right, we'll get this out the way first. Good. You know, Everybody knows your res- reputation, man. Uh, now, you confessed to being involved in 19 murders. How old were you when you first committed your first murder? How was that what? How old were you? I believe I was uh, 24 years old and when I did my first one. And uh, I was just a member of the Colombo family. I was an associate. Mm-hmm. It came down from the boss, Joe Colombo to uh, Carmine Persico, to a guy named Shorty Spiro, who was my boss, and uh, I got the contract. So when we talk about contracts, what does that mean? The name is not on some piece of paperwork somewhere floating around. Yeah, well, it's, you're the guy who's gonna be the guy who's doing the shooting and doing the hit, you're in charge of the hit, and um, you're calling all the shots, and they give you the guy's name who's gonna go, the reason why, and uh, that's about it. It's as simple as that. Now, what happens when it's one of those situations and this is a person that you actually care about, like this is a good friend of yours? Have you ever had that moment? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, absolutely. But, you know, it depends on when it comes down what you did. If you broke rules, certain rules and goes in Austria, um, you had to go. Now, if it's personal, it is what it is. If he broke certain rules, we all take an oath to be in that life. Mm-hmm. We all understand the rules and regulations. Now, if I broke the rule, uh, maybe he would be shooting me, but he broke the rule. It wasn't me, and uh, there's nothing I could do about it. And that oath is taken pretty seriously. Oh, it's taken very seriously. Wow, so you get a guy that's been your friend for years, you guys could have grew up together, and they says that this guy has to go, he has to go. Yes. Yes, more or less. I mean, you can talk for him, de- depending, you know, trying to save his life. You can try to reason with the, the bosses and whatever. But if the reason is too great, he broke a rule that's, sa- you know, sacred to them, then he's just got to go. There's nothing you could do about it. Wow, man, that's deep, man. Now, you were involved in the hit on the Gambino crime boss, Paul Castellano. Yes. And was that an authorized hit? No. That could have ended up in some big shit, man, if it went wrong, huh? Oh, absolutely. It actually did go wrong. I mean, we did lose guys. Frankie De Chico was blown up uh, four months later. The guys, Eddie Lino, there was guys who were killed. It, it broke into a little bit of a war. We were so powerful, John Gotti and myself and a few others, that it was hard to come against us. We just had an army. We had 100 shooters with us. Mm. So it really was hard. So they had to do things when they did it. They did it real sneaky. So we wouldn't know who did what. So, but uh, that we did lose some guys. Yeah, that was a dangerous time. Now, what made you guys t- decide to um, pretty much contract that guy's life? Put a contract out on him. Paul Castellano? Uh-huh. Well, he made a lot of mistakes that would just, when you're the boss, your word is gospel. But still, you gotta be fair, and there's things that you can do. You can put your own life in jeopardy. 
And that's exactly what happened. Now, John Gotti and his crew, there was a rule about not dealing drugs. You deal drugs and you die. Him and his crew got caught dealing drugs. Um, he was in trouble. His whole crew was in trouble. But Paul made so many other blunders and so many things that guys didn't agree with mm -hmm. that rather than killing John, we decided to take out Paul and change the life around and bring it to back to what it was supposed to be. If he didn't do all his crimes, then uh, maybe John Gotti would have died and uh, we wouldn't have helped him. Wow, that's deep, man. And do you think he ever saw it coming? No, obviously not. No. No, he never It's It's so, we put it together so well together. I actually planned the hit. Mm -hmm. It was in Midtown Manhattan in front of Spark Steakhouse. It was 5.30 at night, right before Christmas. Mobs of people in the street, cops everywhere. He never saw that coming. And that that's what I looked for. And I knew the confusion would help us get away with it mm -hmm. and would confuse everything. And it worked to a T. We had 11 guys on the hit, back guys, crash cars, four shooters who would shoot uh, Paul and Tommy Bellotti as driver. Mm -hmm bodyguard so it just came down smooth wow it seems like there's an enormous amount of planning that goes into this it's just not like the stuff that you see today to where a dude is um walking out the liquor store and a car drives by and hits everybody else around the guy except the attendant victim you know they shoot kids grandmothers right. mamas and everybody else it seems like when you guys were out there doing your thing you put a lot of meticulous effort into it we were planning this for about eight months to get the right spot, and I agree. We make sure it's not in front of families, um, their own family. Uh, we try to pick a spot where we could do it properly and without hurting innocent people. But by the same token, if anybody would have interfered with that hit, they would have got hit too. So, but nobody interfered. Everybody ran and screaming, yelling, shots flying all over the place. But it wasn't all over the place. It was into their bodies. They were right up on top. No, no shooting from a car. We were right up on the shooters. were right up on top of the guys. The guns were probably inches away from them when they were pulling triggers. So nobody would get hurt. The whole team had to move away from that hit. We had to work together. We had a thing that it was a do or die hit. It had to be done. And you don't move until the whole team moves. If you move or tried to run before the team moved, then you better keep running because we're going to kill you too as soon as we get you. Wow, man. So this dude evidently pissed a lot of people off, man. People were upset at him and they decided he has to go. So you guys playing this, um, did anybody at any point ever try to talk you guys out of moving forward? No, because it wasn't discussed with very many people. It was mm -hmm. a small little group of us. There was, um, we called it the fist. There was five guys who were important in this. We called it the fist. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was us. We didn't, I didn't even, I had a crew. I didn't talk to my crew about it. Um, they didn't know what was going on. Just one guy in the crew. I did talk to it, this guy, the old man Joe Peruta, because at one point we considered him to be the guy who was gonna do the work. Mm -hmm. They would stop before they went to court every morning in a Greek diner. They would sit near the toilet. We were gonna put a shotgun in the bathroom. Peruta could have went into the bathroom, opened the door, come out, and popped the two of them right away. And that we would have had shooters all over the place to back him up. But the same place that Paul and Tommy would stop and eat breakfast before they went to court, a whole shitload of cops did the same thing. There was just too many cops there. So that plan went down the drain, but that's why I talked with the old man Peruta and he knew. Mm -hmm. But the other people in my crew, I didn't even tell them. So when you guys, um, what's that process like when you guys are deciding who's gonna actually, actually be the one to pull the trigger? How does that process go? Well, I, I, I believe, you know, that's not important. The planning of the hit, of where he can't get away, mm -hmm. one. 
Two, where we could get away. Three, where's the police and who would be a backup shooter to shoot it out if we're shooting it out with the cops? Who would back up the shooters? Um, we picked the four shooters, but every guy on that hit could have been a shooter. It it does it doesn't matter, you know. But I've always learned, uh, learned it doesn't matter who pulls the trigger. It's the man who makes the plans, plans it, mm -hmm. where it's done. It's done efficiently. No matter which way you turn, you're gonna bunk into one of us, and mm -hmm. you're gonna get hit. Now all of all of a sudden he becomes the shooter. So it doesn't really matter. If a gun jams, there's people there. The, the idea of it is to do it quick, effectively, without hurting innocent people. When you start hurting innocent people, like you said, a drive-by, you come by and you open a window and start shooting. When you hit innocent kids or innocent women or people who are innocent, to the whole thing, you're gonna bring an enormous amount of heat. It seems like the law enforcement, they'll investigate this till no end, but they don't really give a fuck when you're shooting each other. But when you're shooting innocent people, you're gonna bring the wrath of the entire fucking system down on you. Mm -hmm. So it depends on how you want it. That's the way the mafia does it. We plan it, we're in no rush, we watch you, Day and night, we'll pick a spot, we'll plan it, and um, you're going to go. Just a matter of time. Wow, because you know what? We see a lot of people, like, I, I love gangster shit. I'm going to be honest with you, I love gangster shit. So whether it's about the Italian mafia, F-13, black gorilla family, I'm into all that shit, right? So you're a guy, you're a gangster for all practical purposes. You know, you're a gangster. Oh, I'm a gangster. I'm, I'm literally a gangster all my life. Before that, I was a kid. I was dyslexic. I had trouble in school. School wasn't my thing, so I belonged to a gang, the Rampus, mm -hmm. street gang. Nothing sophisticated, just a bunch of young Turks running around and doing stupid shit most of the time. Uh, when I was 19, I got drafted during the Vietnam War and went to military, mm -hmm. uh, being taught to kill because you're gonna, you probably will be involved in the war. I came out, I was 21 years old. Um, at 23, I became an associate of the Colombo family. At 24, I did my first piece of work, meaning a hit. And from that point on, I was, you know, after a while I was transferred from the Colombo family to the Gambino family. Mm -hmm. I was with this old man, the old man Tato, a uh, very wise, very powerful captain. And um, he's the guy who actually told me um, that using your head is the most important thing. My Gumbada was a tough guy, Ali Boy Como. And uh, Tato one time grabbed me, he says, how come every time there's a stick up, you're walking in the store with the gun first and Ali Boy's behind you? I said, he's a tough guy, bro. He's got my back and I'm comfortable with that. He said, yes, he is a tough guy. He said, but he's re reactionary. Mm -hmm. If there's a problem, a cop walks by, don't even know what's going on. He's, he's going to start shooting. He's not going to try and think his way out of it, whatever. He's going to start shooting immediately. Mm -hmm. You got brains, you think. If you reverse that and you're the backup shooter, or the backup guy, mm -hmm. you're gonna think and try to think your way out of it. You don't have to necessarily start shooting. If there's a problem, you will shoot, I know that. But you'll think first. Try to do it the other way around. I thought about it and I started doing that. And I thought that he was right. My Gumbada, I loved him, a real tough guy, but he would shoot you right away. He no hesitate. hesitation. No hesitation. And I didn't want that. We don't have to be on a murder. We're on a stick up. If we could think our way out if there's a problem, let's do that. It's one thing to do a stick up, it's a whole nother thing to leave a body and do a murder. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. You know, recently in LA, LA has actually had a rash of robberies 
that have resulted in people getting murdered. I'm talking about high profile guys. You know, a guy sitting right. in a restaurant with his fiance eating lunch and he gets murdered for his chain. Right. I thought that was ridiculous. I said, you know, when, when do we start, like when did the victims of robbery start getting murdered and shot in cold blood? It's crazy to me. Right. And I think that goes back to what you said about planning things. Right. These things obviously aren't planned. I think it's the thing that where literally somebody's in the restaurant, they call and say, hey, He's this gone. guy's in here shining, let's get him. Somebody comes in, I think usually, you know, some people are scary, man, some people will shoot you. Yeah, but I was in prison with a guy and, uh, he went into a bodega and went in with a gun to rob it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he pulled his gun out, told the guy to give him his money. The guy opened the register, got all the money, the money under the count, everything, and gave it to him. And he shot him and killed him. And he was in prison with me. So I told him, why'd you shoot him? He gave you the money. He said, Sammy, he, he could have been a witness. Then why the fuck didn't you wear a, ma a mask? They don't think. The guy's going to give you the money. If you wore a mask, you robbed him, he gave you the money, he's not going to be a witness. Obviously, you wouldn't have to shoot him. And now you're facing not only robbery, but a murder case. And it gets more intense. It's one thing for a bodega or a store to get robbed. It's a whole nother thing on the murder. Exactly. You know, and I've been seeing that, you know, from the drive-by shootings to the robberies like that, it's always a whole bunch of needless bloodshed. Yeah. And I would think if that was my business crime, I would want I would want it at least the least attention possible. I want to come in, Absolutely. do what I do, and, and be gone. Right. And now the guy may not even want to be a witness. He said, hey, listen, I don't even want to get involved. I give the guy the money. I don't know what he looks like. I don't know. He was black. He was Spanish. He was white. Whatever. The, he don't want to even get involved. Now you're forcing all kinds of things. I'll give you another example. There's, I did time with these kids, these M13 kids. Now you mm -hmm. belong to a gang. You're killing people to rob a bike. You're killing people for all kinds of shit. Now you belong to this gang, M13. Now you're a member, you get arrested as an M13 member, and it's not for a murder, it's for anything. The public hates you. You're never gonna be the case. Soon as they hear he's a member of the M13, you're mm -hmm. dead. Even if you're innocent, you ain't going to beat this case. They hate you. The prosecutors will go with their case. They're usually good prosecutors. Their investigators are, are, are cops or FBI. You're going down with some broken-ass lawyer, some mm -hmm. fucking ex-cop who's a half a drunk, mm -hmm. and you're going to go fight a case with a, with a rap sheet of that, you're the M13. You're dead. You better take a fucking plea. You're dead. You can't win a case. Yeah, for real. So especially. you have that rep. You 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 are giving yourselves that rap. Mm -hmm. The mafia don't do that. The mafia, the public looks at, at the mafia and says, "Well, they kill each other because they break rules. They don't hurt us." Mm -hmm. It's a different mentality. Not that we beat cases that much, but you, at least you got a shot. Yeah, I've never heard the one thing I've never heard. I've never heard of a bunch of kids getting killed behind the Italian mafia. No, you won't you, you won't hear that hear with that. normal street gang stuff. You hear about guys all the time. Right. You know, and, and even now they got a thing to where a lot of these rappers are getting indicted because of their rap lyrics. Right. They're they're burying themselves, they're burying their own people, their own race, their they're their own they're their own worst problem. Look what's going on in Chicago. It's insane. Mm. You're killing each other for a spot. This is my drug spot. Or I'm gonna take over your drug spot. You could argue, you could fight, you could do whatever you want. But you, when you start killing people at 22 shootings in a weekend, six five people dead, I mean, how are you ever you you're hurting yourselves a hundred thousand percent? Mm -hmm. And you know the thing is, it's gotten so bad in Chicago. They they're stopping. Um, I think it's a threat. I wish I could find this shit, but if you threaten a public official, if you threaten somebody, if you kidnap somebody, if you um, attempt to kill somebody, they're letting you out of jail now. They're not holding those people for those crimes anymore. They're going to be let go until their court date arrives. Right. That's almost like that shit. What's that movie, The Purge? It right. almost sounds like that shit, The Purge. It's almost just, like they're condoning it. Yeah, go ahead, they're gonna go let, out, brother. You know, kill but all the people you want to. See, here's how I look at it. I'm not a black guy, but I look at it as a black guy 
why the fuck would you let these guys go? Because you're letting them go in our community. It's going to kill our people, and you don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's crazy, ain't it? I mean, that that's racist to me. You're letting this guy go who's fucking completely nuts, and he's going to kill more black people. Yeah, I'm going to try. But it, I, you obviously don't care about that. I'm going to try to find this shit. Hold on. But they're letting people go with some crazy shit, attempted murder, all kind of shit. There it is right there. You found it. Illinois' non-detainable offenses beginning January 1st, 2023. Aggravated battery, aggravated DUI, aggravated fleeing, arson, burglary, drug-induced homicide, intimidation, kidnapping, robbery, second-degree murder, threatening a public official. So that means, now just imagine, I'm a kid that has to live in that bullshit anyway. A guy comes into my house, he smacks my mama around, he smacks my daddy around, steals some shit. We call the police, they come and grab this motherfucker. I go outside six hours later, this same motherfucker is sitting across from me drinking a beer. Yeah. What the fuck is supposed to happen? I might as well blow this guy's brains out when he comes in my house. Right, and my point is that they don't care because that kid is gonna go not only to your mama now, she's going to his mama now, and they, you're both black people, and they don't care. Stop, stop that kid. You got a cop who puts his knee on somebody. He does the wrong thing. Bury him. You got a black guy who's doing that to black people. Bury him. Or he's going to keep doing it. So you're giving him a more or less a license. I mean, mm-hmm. I grew up a tough kid. If I had a fucking license to go out and do anything I want, only God knows what you would do. But we had, you know, you, you're you going to go away for doing mm-hmm. those things. When you take that away... You just gave this kid a license to do what the fuck he wants. Yeah, for real, it's crazy right now. Yeah, that's insane. I don't even know. It's hard to answer that because it's politicians uh, off the hook. I mean, how could you be a politician and make those laws? That means you don't care about those black lives in Chicago? Mm-hmm. What other what the answer is there? You, you don't care. Well, you know what I think needs to happen, Sammy? Um and I said this when this young man lost his life. See, I have a son that has worked very hard to get where he's at. And ever since this kid was little, I always said, Dad, I want a big gold chain. He saw a picture of Tupac Shakur. You know, kids are right, influenced right. by people they see. Absolutely. He saw Tupac when he was a six-year-old kid. He told me, Dad, I'm going to get me a chain like that one day. Yeah. And the first piece of little money he got went out and bought him a chain. Now, he wasn't hanging out in the neighborhood. He was at a Super Bowl party with other NFL players and, you know, these guys. He walks out the club, club, guy comes and puts a gun in his chest. And he did just what I've always told him. Don't be a tough guy. Somebody got the drop on you, put a gun in your chest, give them whatever the fuck they want. Right. Don't do no argument. So he did that. So I get the call 6 o'clock in the morning. First, I'm pissed off. I'm mad. But then I'm thankful. I'm saying, you know what? I'm glad my son was able to call me. Fuck that chain. He has his life. Yeah, right, absolutely. You know, he has his life, and I think um, we need to start getting upset as a community when we got assholes out committing crimes like that. Right. Just when Johnny Officer Law does the wrong thing, just like you go out and protest behind that, go out and protest when we got these assholes that have been doing the same thing in the community for the last 40 years, and you're just allowing them to get away with it. Nobody says anything. Be just as upset because I think what happens is, man, I think people that do crime, when they keep their intentions on other people that are in the same field as them, I don't think there's nothing wrong with that because you know what you're getting into. If I decide to pledge allegiance today to the Crip or Bloods, I expect to live a certain type of lifestyle after right. that. I expect to have problems right. when I go certain places. I'm asking for that. But for the person that's not asking for that shit, they shouldn't be involved in that shit. No. I agree, I agree a thousand percent. Same thing with the mafia. I take this oath. I know I will kill or be killed according to our rules. But I, there's no rules in the mafia where I'm going to kill innocent people. The whole mafia will despise me because they'll know that what kind of heat it brings us. It gives us a diff- It gives you a different, the public, a different look at you. And after many times, they have enough for you. But what the politicians are doing confuses me because I just don't get it. I, unless they just want these crimes to continue, for some reason, whatever the reason is, I don't know and I don't understand it. But um, 
I, I, I don't understand why the black community would vote that person in and vote them in again and again and again. What the fuck are you doing for them? Not you're their thing. representative. They voted you in, and you're allowing this? I'm, I'm talking to any, everybody, I'm, my, my black brothers and sisters, people I've done time with. Bro, get rid of them. Get mm -hmm. rid of them. I don't give a fuck if he's a Democrat or Republican or what he is. Get rid of him because you're fighting for you. Exactly. You're fighting for your community. This guy's putting them in your community. He's not putting them in mine. He's putting them in your community. So if he can't even have the decency to do that, I don't give a fuck what color he is or what nationality he is or, or if it's a man or a woman, get rid of them. Yeah, he needs to go. Well, one of the people on there, they said if you threaten the public official, so that means if the mayor of Chicago pisses me off, I can catch him coming out of his office, choke him out, pistol whip him a little bit, and I'm going to be free until I go to court. The mayor? But that's what it says. It says yeah, public official, right? Yeah, I doubt that. Official. But, I mean, I doubt that. I mean, they say a lot of things. You know, Obama just said, you know, letting the border stay open, people coming in. It's cool. They just dumped a whole bunch of people in Martha's Vineyard, and he called the police. And he called the National Guard to get those fucking people away from his fucking house. So, I mean, they say one thing, but they it's they say one thing, it's good for them. Because those people they're letting in, as long as they're in front of your houses, they they're good. it's a good thing. Let them let them be there. But put those same people in front of their houses and <laughs> they're calling the cops, they're calling the military, get them the fuck out of here. Oh yeah, for sure. So a hundred percent. Now Sammy are you a religious guy at all? Do you have any spiritual, um, are you, are you spiritual at all? Mm, very little. Here's what it is with religion. I believe in God, just like anybody else. I believe in God because who made this whole thing? You look at the sky, it's beautiful. Who could make that? But religions, uh, I find, don't live up to their own what they say. You know, they don't, what what's what you shouldn't do, but they do the same thing. There's religions who say they're against gay people, mm -hmm. and some of their priests. <laughs> yeah, some of their priests are yeah. gay. Yeah. So I mean, you, like like oh, I, you know, in my religion when I was Catholic, I'd go to go to and confess, and I would go there. Give me, tell me what you did wrong. No, fuck you. Tell me what you did wrong, bro. <laughs> Don't be telling me that's why. I, tell me what you did wrong, and I'll tell you what I did wrong. You yeah, know, so, but I, and, so. and and religions, it's all about money. A lot of it. So I'm not that. You know, you know. I hear these stories. If you don't come true, Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. If you say five Hail Marys and five five our fathers, you'll be forgiven. But if not, you'll go to hell, and you'll go burn, and you'll be tortured. Oh, I thought he was a fair guy, that he would give me a break just for saying five prayers. Mm -hmm. he, he don't sound that fair. He's going to send me down there to burn and beaten and tortured. And mm -hmm. that don't sound like a pretty fair guy to me, bro. So yeah, you're so. bullshitting about God. You're, you're coming up with some stories that, you know, you're trying to scare me into that. Yeah, well, you know, because everybody has a different belief when you die. I even think the Scientologists believe one thing. Um, I'm from the black church. I was raised as a Southern Baptist church, and um, they believe that you could die if you fucking up in life. You die, you go to hell, you go burn forever. And that used to always kind of bother me because, see, in the eyes of God, according to the Bible, and I'm going according to the Bible, the Bible says that God looks at sin as sin. So whether I go out and murder a motherfucker or I go out and steal a candy bar from the corner store, in the eyes of God, it's the same thing. So it's kind of like, man, so God has sent somebody to burn for an eternity, man, for stealing the candy bar? Yeah, I don't buy all that stuff. See, that's what I mean. I mean, about religions, they go to an extreme that I don't buy. And they, you know, in a lot of religions, everything is about money. You you want to get married, then you got to pay for a, a marriage certificate. You want to get this, you got to pay for that. You want to uh, give contributions. You know, I it, it's a lot about money. And it's a lot about what you shouldn't do, but I don't have those same rules. I could do it, but I'm telling you not to do it. I, I just don't buy those rules. So religion has, you know, and when I was in prison, 
I joined the Indian crew. I really joined it to smoke because they were passing the pipe around. Mm -hmm. There was no more smoking in the federal, and I wanted to smoke. And I got in. I got to respect their religion a little bit. I went with Wicca. I respected theirs. I was born as a Catholic. I understood a lot of things. One guy wanted me to be a Muslim, joined them. Um, I said, uh, I, I like pork. Mm. I like certain things. <laughs> I have no intentions of giving that up. <laughs> you know mm. what I mean? So whatever, if I go to hell for because I'm eating pork, that's fine with me. So you don't think it's going to be a guy up there? Because I believe in God. You know, I believe yeah, in God. I do and this too. is no offense to nobody. I think everybody should have the freedom of choice to believe in whatever they want to believe in. But I don't know. So Sam, you don't think it's gonna be a you don't think God is gonna be sitting up there waiting to judge you and say, Sammy the bull. Yeah, I, 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 I hope to... there is. I hope there is because I believe there's God and God is our creator and he made everything. He made lions and he made lambs. I happen to be a lamb, a lion. Mm -hmm. I'm not a lamb. So I think he'll be cool with it. You mm -hmm. made me. You could have stopped me at any point in your life, mm -hmm. in my life, and mm -hmm. and I think he would be fair and even, and I would think that the person who is, you know, preaching all this preaching stuff, when he goes there and he's ahead of me, bro, I listen, at least I didn't lie like this guy was lying. He was using your name in vain. Mm -hmm. He was lying about you. So I think he's got a bigger problem than I got. I'm not a liar. I am what I am. I did what I did. Mm -hmm. I be, I was a liar. You made me. You could have stopped me. You should have stopped me, maybe. Mm -hmm. Now now I'm in trouble with you because of what I did. You made me. Yeah. And if you believe in God, you believe that he did. He's the almighty, and he created life, and he could stop life. Yeah, fair enough. So... Recently, you know, I was sitting at home maybe a few weeks ago and I was watching this thing on Hulu. And it was, um, and the woman, she compares you to a serial killer. Mm, you know yeah. what show I'm talking about? Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it was a show on ABC. Yeah, yeah. It was um, Something Lies and The Last Gangster. And yeah, it was The about Last me. Gangster. It was the Last Gangster when it was about me. And they interviewed some woman. She called me a you know, serial killer. First of all, she's a moron. She doesn't even know the definition of a serial killer. The difference between a fight where somebody kills somebody, a gang, a mm -hmm. serial killer, a mob guy. She has no conception of what she's even talking about. But there is people like that now around us in society saying all kinds of things. They're, they'll 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 look at you, bro. You're a big, strong black guy and they'll call you something, uh, a name, because they're giving you a label. Everybody wants to give somebody a label mm -hmm. when they don't even know what they're talking about. You might be the nicest guy. As far as I know, this isn't my first time with you. This is my second time. You and your friends and the guys, the other guys we were with that are not here today with you. But when I came here free will, I loved it. You treated me like a king, you're a gentleman. I was joking with him before. I was putting my uh, my hand near his mouth, taking a picture, joking, laughing. Uh, you're not evil. You, just because you're black, I mean, or something, you, to me, you're not evil. Yeah. So these people love giving labels. She's probably the biggest racist on two fucking feet. She mm -hmm. sees a black man, she shits her fucking panties, and she'll call you a name. So the same thing with me. I was in a mafia. And I was a hit guy. And I never killed an, a kid, a woman, or a legitimate guy. I did what I did as a soldier in the mafia. I was also in the, in the army during the Vietnam War. I was being trained by our government to go kill Vietnamese people. It was all bullshit. So then I was good. I was going to kill people. Mm-hmm. And it was all bullshit. I never met a bad Vietnamese person in my life. Yeah. So everything they were telling you, they're communists, they're coming here, they're going to rape your mother, your sister, that's all bullshit. It was all bullshit. I think America pretty much has intentions when they go to war. I think everything is about money. I think it's no different than what anybody else is doing. I think everything is about money. Everything comes down to money, power, and position. Money, power, greed, 
It's all about that all the time. Every time you look, I turn around as a mafioso. Whatever goes on, and especially if it doesn't make sense, I say, well, there's money or a power move or greed. There's something there. And if you look at it, it's always there. Mm-hmm. Always there. Yeah, look at the whole conflict in the Middle East. I think that's behind money. You know, people want oil. Yeah. Yeah, it's always about money and greed and power. Look what they're doing now. I mean, you know, the, the country is literally falling apart. Mm-hmm. You want to you wanna leave the borders wide open like this? Fentanyl running around? 100,000 people are addicted? 50,000 people died? Mm-hmm. I mean... Where does that make any kind of sense? These politicians are lawyers, doctors, college graduates, PhDs. They know this is fucking so wrong, but they'll tell us, oh, it's good, it's compassionate. We're being compassionate. Yeah, you know what? We got a lot of fucked up stuff going on in the country now, but I will say this. I've been all around the world and I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. I think America is a great country. I think we got a lot of shit we need to fix over here though. Like, I think the economy right now is about to go to shits. Yeah, yeah, the I economy, agree. You, you can just tell like, um, and I was actually talking to my wife um, the other day and I said, you know what? Our house is worth a million dollars and I don't live in a big 6,000 square foot house. I live in a condo and it's worth a million dollars now. You know, and I'm almost yeah. thinking about cash now because I told my wife, I don't I think, think that money should. is going to be there. I don't think it's going to be there six months from now. No. So if you think that we're going to float on this, we better take it now. Yeah. If if if, if we go into a full-blown depression, not a recession, but a depression, that a million-dollar home that you have, is, you'll be lucky if you get five, 600000 for it. Mm-hmm. That's true. Because it ain't going to ha- It's Nobody's going to, no, no houses, nobody's going to, everybody's going to go bust with that. So we're living in a time, I agree with you, this is the best country on the planet. But I gotta add this, it was. We were flying here, me and my girl here. Um, And I said, you know, go back 250, 300 years ago. There was no planes, there was no cars, there was no high rise buildings. Look at how far we came in 200 to 300 years ago, somewhere in that gap. Mm -hmm. Technology, all of these things. It's almost like I feel like we hit a peak and now we're going backwards. Are we going to destroy this? Are we going to get into a war? These nuclear bombs would take out, see how we're sitting here and, and, and 20 miles in every which direction. If a bomb hit, one of those fucking bombs hit over here, uh, we're all gone. Are we gone? The whole neighborhood, <laughs> the whole thing is flattened. Mm-hmm. Trees, houses, everything would be mush. We're dead. It's too much, It's and it's too dangerous. And it's men, women, and children. And it's good people who did nothing. Well, you so, know what? Everything is kind of based on the hypocrisy almost. Like, I laugh at the California gun laws. If I want to go buy some bullets a day for my 12 gauge, I've got to show my ID. I got to do all this other shit. It shouldn't be like that. It's my constitutional right. I don't have a criminal record. I should be able to go buy it. If I go to now Georgia, I can go in and walk, buy a 45 and walk out the same day. As long right. as I have my driver's license right. here, they're making it more difficult for the motherfuckers that are legal to get firearms than it are. And it's like, it's not like the Crips and Bloods or the street gangs. I'm gonna stop saying Crips and Bloods because all of them ain't criminals. But that's a whole nother story. But the guy that's living in the underworld, he's not going to the Kmart to go buy 12 gigs. He's going to go see his partner, Juan. Juan is gonna open up a blanket and go have all kind of straps there. He go have some 22s, some right. 45s, right. some nine millimeters, some 12 gauge. Say, what do you want? He's gonna give him some cash and he's gonna walk out. Not right. showing no ID or right. not, he's just come to make a purchase of a weapon. But now they're making it harder for the civilians to kind of take care of themselves because they got all these fucking laws. When I think you should be able to walk around like the old West days. And it's like that in some countries. If you go to Texas, you see people walking around with the 12 gauges right. in the middle of the lake car, um, sitting up in the stock of their car. Arizona too. They got pistols on the side. Yeah. Now how much bullshit, did, how, how many robberies happened in Arizona? Not too many because you gotta think twice when you're gonna do a fucking robbery. You gotta say the guy behind the counter, 
the guy at the pump and the gas, they all got guns. Mm -hmm. So you got to be a little fucking crazy. You know, all of these things, I mean, look at, we're talking here about things, talking about, uh, they want us all to have electric cars. I just talked with somebody recently about this. There's 40 million people living in California, 40 million. Mm -hmm. There's approximately about 30 million cars. A couple of days ago, you had a heat wave. And they yeah, sent no. notices, get you, lower your air conditioner, shut your lights, do this, do that, because the grid can't carry the electric. Yeah, they were having rolling blackouts. We were sitting down watching TV, and the yeah. electricity just cuts out yeah, for a few seconds. On. It cuts back on. But think about this. Now, Governor Newsom says, I'm going to make all the cars electric. 30 million cars, where are they going to plug it into? If you can't handle two days of heat, that this, all this blackouts and everything happens, where are you going to plug all these 30 million cars into? Yeah, because once they go to plug them in their garage, it's going to cause the grid to really get over can, You can't handle it. There's yeah. no way. So, and then this guy, they wanted to get him out, and they did a revote, and they overwhelmingly vote him in again. What's wrong with you people? See, that's what, you know what, the whole thing about voting, that's another thing, is I've changed my opinion about that. I used to always tell my friends, hey, go out and vote, go out and vote. But then what I found out is that our vote doesn't really impact shit. I know. I, and and, and it's, it's a lot of times it could possibly be rigged. I, I'm starting to believe that, too. I don't know if it's true, but I, oh, I'm I think starting it is. to believe. So if, I mean, you take away that right that we have, you know, America was great for one reason. We had, it's like we're doing now. You may disagree with me about what I'm saying. I may disagree with you, a black man, a white man. We can argue and talk and disagree. That's America. That's a beautiful thing. You're almost to the point where you're taking that away. Our vote don't mean anything. We can't even have a conversation. I disagree with you. He jumps up. She jumps up. This one jumps up. And they're mm -hmm. telling me I got five, six, seven people against me. Whoa, okay, okay, I, I give up. I'll agree with you, whatever you say, I'll agree with it. That's not America, that's not freedom. We're losing that, we're gradually losing it. Well, who's that black girl that I, I like all the time? Candace Owen. Huh? Candace, Can <laughs> Candace, Candace Owen, I love her, I'll tell you the truth, I love her. I hear her talking to black people, a white or black woman talking to black people and she's telling them right where it's at, the truth, and telling them, what are we doing? We give our vote, we give our voice to certain people, and, and, and they're killing us. Why are we stuck in certain places? Let's use our head and think. She, I love the things she said. She's a smart woman. Yeah, you know what? I think she's very smart, and I think a lot of things that she says go over people's heads. I think people yeah. think too much in an emotional space right now. Yeah. I think we got people that are dealing with everything on an emotional level now, and everything, I think it causes them not to really listen. I think people hear things, but they're not listening fully. Right. Because a lot of the stuff she says is spot on. I, I think so too, and I heard a, a guy who was talking with her, it was a black guy, He was, and he told her, you're not black. <laughs> I, said, I said to myself, is this guy crazy? She's black. She's talking common sense to you. She's trying to get you to go in a different direction and change your life and get straight. And you want to say she's not black? Why, because she's not thinking like you? Th there's that freedom thing again. You go, whether you agree with her or not, you got to give her, hey, she's got a voice. Well, and Sam, she is black. Don't, Sam, don't you got to realize what's shit. going on. You got to realize what's going on with a lot of people, though. A lot of people are so indoctrinated and programmed into a certain way of thinking. They've right. been hearing this way, you know, like right. it's like with religion. Right. You know, I come from a religious family. We used to have to go to church every Sunday. And I swore, I said, when I get grown, I'm not going to church anymore unless I want to go. Right. Because, you know, in a black church, we sitting there, man, from 8 o'clock in the morning to like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's like, man, I'm starving. I'm ready to go home. I've been, you know, you have to stand up. If I wouldn't stand up, my mom would slap me in the back of the head. I had to stand up, you know. And I was like, man, my knees are hurting, man. My feet are hurting. I'm wearing these hard-ass shoes. I want to go home. But 
we were forced to do that. So just imagine you go through that for 15 years, then you get married, you start kind of repeating the same cycle because you've been taught that's what's right. I think a lot of people are indoctrinated into bullshit though nowadays. Oh, there's, there's no doubt. We grow up in a society, our neighborhoods where we grow up, me, me I'll you use me, I grew up in a neighborhood that was mafia controlled. So to me, those were my heroes. Mm -hmm. You get a guy in in the Bronx or whatever, he comes in a black neighborhood, the guy the drug deal, he's got money, a beautiful car, a beautiful girl around him. He's your hero. He as a kid, you're growing up, you know, mm -hmm. you know, know the difference? I mean, he's your hero. So we're indoctrinated into our society, into what we see mm -hmm. and what we learn whether it's coming from our mother, our father, our priest, or whoever it's coming from, and schools. Schools, I think, is a nice a nightmare. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, 100%. you can go in, you could be a, a, a guy, a, a guy, you, you, you were a man, very manly guy, you could say, I'm a woman now. And we gotta respect that. All right, only because you're fucking nine feet tall, I'll respect that you're a woman, but you ain't a woman. And the same thing, a woman could say she's a man. The best thing I heard, I heard a conversation, and and the guy who uh, was tall, I forgot his name, but he's talking about it, and he's saying, but I have to accept those things, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. So he asked the woman, he said, I could ask you your age because you really, I could see you're not that old, so it's not offensive. How old are you? She says, I'm, I'm in my 30s. So, okay, when you're in your 60s, could you turn around and say, I'm 23? Oh, no, no, I can't. Uh, why? If he could say he's a woman and you, this woman could say she's a guy, why can't you say you're 23? <laughs> but she couldn't even answer the question because it's that don't make sense. She's well, 60 something and she's 23. It don't make sense. But it don't make sense the other ways too. I don't want to put them down. I'm, that's not my, my point. My point is certain things you're forcing on people that don't make sense and you, what you're doing is fucking up all of society. Yeah, well, everything is real We don't even know up. what to say anymore. Everything is real fucked up right now. You know, going back to the, to the mafia, I wanted to ask you one question. The Italian mafia always dealt with law enforcement, right? Like yeah. you guys had law enforcement on the payroll. You guys had Sometimes, people in the yeah. police department yeah. and everything like that. How much of that you think goes on today? I don't think much of it goes on. Because what the law enforcement did, especially FBI and people, they took, like, let's say I'll use New York. Mm -hmm. What they did, I know that long ago, they took anybody who became an FBI agent and would come out of New York, he would go be a fucking FBI agent in, in North Carolina, South Carolina, not in New York. So, like, let's say me and him, we grew up in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I'm becoming a mafia guy and he becomes a cop or a FBI agent. Hey, Sammy, how you doing? How you doing, too? We're friends. We knew each other as kids. It's too tempting. We might make a move or close our eyes to certain things. So what they're doing is they're putting him in South Carolina, and they're putting somebody from fucking Kentucky, who's an agent, mm -hmm. on me. Now, we don't know each other. We don't have anything in common with each other. So what they did is break all of that up. So it's really hard to have those kind of relationships. If I grew up with a guy all my life and he was a cop, and he might not even be a bad cop. I'll give you an example. I knew a cop. He wasn't a bad cop. He was a regular cop. No take, no nothing. One day he was pissed me. He said, Sammy, bro, I'm in circles that your name just keeps popping up, bro. What you're doing, uh, be careful. All right, bro, thanks. So now I know my name is coming up in circles all over the place, but he just did that not for money, not because he was a bad cop, just we grew up together. And he had a little sympathy to say, you know, you know chill, mm -hmm. more or less. He's not, he's not asking for nothing. So they, they break that up. They broke that up as much as humanly possible. I think it's tough to bribe them today. Well, I think, I, I'm going to tell you what I think definitely happens. I don't think they pay those guys enough. 
I don't think they pay school teachers enough. Um, you think about a police officer, he risks his life right there. Nobody likes cops, no. right? So, and he's always under the threat when he pulls a guy over because he has a broken tail light. Is this motherfucker on his third strike? Does he have a hammer in his right. lap waiting right. to blow my brains out when right. I walk up to him by the window? So I think they go through a lot of shit. And I think that's a lot to ask, man. You know, some of these guys, especially when you talk about DEA agents, they raid a house and they go back there and there's $10 million back there and that shit is all clumped up, you know what I mean? What's to stop them from taking a little bit of that money a stack and putting in their pocket, man? That has to be tempting. I, yeah, it is tempting and, I, I, and I, I think some of them actually do that. And what, I mean, I, I agree with you, cops ain't bad, I mean, some are. Mm -hmm. But you can't take one cop, and I'll give you the example, the guy who put his knee on that guy's neck. Mm -hmm. He, as soon as I saw that, before the explosions happened or anything, I said, this guy's dead. The guy's choking, he's handcuffed. You, you're killing him, publicly. Mm -hmm. So you're dead. And uh, there was all kinds of riots over it and everything like that. It wasn't even necessary, but the, he's a bad cop. It's not all of them. It's not every single one of them. Um, and and I, I look at it this way. You know, we're doing it in, you know, they, they want to replace cops with social workers, right? Mm -hmm. So I look at this. We're doing an interview. He's the sound guy, right? This mm -hmm. kid sitting over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, he kills over, he falls on the floor, he's having a heart attack. Who am I going to call? A social worker? That ain't no fucking help for him. <laughs> he wants a fucking cop. Yeah, he wants, <laughs> he wants an bike. ambulance. He don't, yeah. want, he don't give a fuck. He's black, white, green. He wants a cop to come and help him. Or your mother or your wife or your sister's getting raped. They don't want a psychologist. Maybe three months later, they want somebody to get them the fuck out of that situation now. Mm -hmm. And those people do it. So you got a bad cop, break his hold. And I'll give you one even better, Sammy. If I look outside, dude, if my mom says, I'm not looking out the window and there's a bunch of guys with guns, I don't want no social worker walking up with no um, manila folders and no pencils and shit. I want somebody to come in with guns, with, with straps. Guns. Uh, yeah, a whole bunch of So they of can them. shoot some people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Eliminate the threat. <laughs> right. You know, right. I want to ask you something. Eliminate the threat. You know, Sam, you seem to be a dude that's well versed in every time. I wanted to see what your thoughts were on something. You know, after raising ninety million dollars in 2020, Black Lives Matter has 42 million in assets. That was just two years ago. When you talk about us doing stuff for the community, we need to ask those questions. What the fuck are you doing with the money? I, I know. I think I know what they do with the money. Candace Owen, I saw her going to somebody's house who's one of the leaders there, and she's living in a fucking Lily White neighborhood in a fucking million-dollar fucking home mm -hmm. with fucking white bodyguards telling Candace Owen, you're threatening me. I laughed my head off because that's a joke. It was a joke. She's going out telling, you know, I'm raising money for Black Lives Matter, you know, help the black people. They gave money, all kinds of people, like you said, 90 million. Where'd the money go? It went into her buying a house. Her, her, her brother is a, a fucking broken down lawyer who's, she's paying him a million dollars a year. That's where that money went. It went south, so to speak. You know, and I hope because a lot of people stood behind that man and I think we need to start doing a better job as a society and as a people, especially my people, of actually researching stuff. Because we see some just because it says Black Lives Matter, how, who do we know that's behind that? No, there's no. You know the best is, listen to this one. We sent 50 or $60 billion to Ukraine. Finally, we sent a, 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 a group down there who says, Show us what you did with the money that we're spending. 30% of the money, $60 billion, is accounted for. <laughs> the other money, because I'm going to tell you this. $70 where, billion, where'd it go? <laughs> what do you mean it's $30 billion is accounted I'll for? I'll tell you where it went. It went yeah, to get the Swiss motherfuckers banks. up at top. I, I, <laughs> Out of that shit, they said we out of here. As soon as they got the sixty billion, they said we're gone. Yeah. And I hope it didn't happen that way, man. But the country has turned to a lot of bullshit. You can't say what you want to say no more. No, everybody's trying to. Everybody's on the take, including Black Lives Matter. All of those people. 
the NAACP and everybody else because they don't do anything. I have yet to see, because you know what I've never understood, I got a friend that works for the Compton Unified School District. They have new laptops, new computers in this building, and he says, man, they won't let us take them out. Why do we buy all this shit to keep it sitting there and the kids are using stuff in the classroom that's 20, 30 years old? Nothing makes sense. Just behind, but they got a whole place full of new computers and they were talking about, oh, these computers have been stolen, somebody stole computers. Well, maybe if they were in the classrooms where they're supposed to be, Maybe not, and I, I just think everybody's on the take, man. It is. I, I think so, too. I agree with that. It seems like everywhere you look, everything that don't make sense, somebody's taking. Now, I would say, if that's the case, I would say, where did you buy these computers? What store? Mm-hmm. Maybe his uncle owns the store and he winds up buying 300 fucking computers or 5,000 computers and they're making a ton of money. It becomes obvious. See, they, me and the mafia, I look at everything like that. Follow the money. Follow where it went. And, and, and all of a sudden, you'll open up. Who, yeah, I said this too. These electric cars. All the politicians, I would like to see their investments. Are they investing in electric cars? That they want us to all buy electric cars? Mm-hmm. I believe, so. yeah, I, I believe so. They've incentivized it because you could tell you get tax, you could forget Brian, you get tax breaks on that shit. You get all kind, you save all kind of money. On yeah. it. So please believe somebody's getting a kickback, man. I just think. Oh, there's no question. You know what? I, I just think America as a whole is ran, is governed under gangsterism. Yeah. I, I, I don't know where it stops. I, I told somebody this morning, and I want to tell you. You're not an old man. 20 years from now, your grandkids gonna come to you. Grandpa, where the fuck were you 20 years ago? You allowed this to happen? That's what's gonna happen to us. Me, I won't be here 20 years from now, but there's a lot of people in their 30s and 40s and 20 something years, 20 years, they're gonna say, where the fuck were you? How did you allow this to happen? You might be here, Sammy. You'd be 97 then, right? Yeah. You might, man, with technology, man, we just talked about technology. I'm gonna tell you some shit, and this is gonna go way left. I was looking at some stuff the other day online. They said that they're close to figuring out a way. I wouldn't be surprised if they had it to where they can take your conscience, your conscience, your soul, and put it in the computer. So you can live forever. Yeah. Live like in a computer simulation. Yeah. I, I don't want to live in no computer, bro. When I get in bed, I don't want I want to bang something. I don't I don't be I don't want to be in no box just talking. But just think about it though, because apparently <laughs> I want a little action, bro. But, but have you heard about that though? <laughs> it won't be like you in the computer, Sam. You would be just like you in here with this room with us. You could they say they could you could make this shit however you want to. If you want to go in there, man, and be the richest dude in there, you'd be, you know, I guess you get to do your thing. Oh, a in there. simulator. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like a simulated reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, I mean you're not alive, you just it's a simulator. Simulator. It's not. You're not really alive. You mean your brain is still alive? Yeah, I guess your brain is still alive. That's what they're talking about, man. They're talking. They're talking. But let me find that. I, shit, I, I'm, I'm better off going to hell with the strip clubs and everything. Let me, <laughs> let me go where I gotta go. Man, Don't put me in no box. <laughs> I think, like the song says, Sammy. I think if it's a hell, I think we all going. I think you yeah. know if you if you look at yeah. what it says, I think we've yeah. all fallen. I think every man on this and woman on this planet has sinned in some form or another. Oh, absolutely. I think so, too. I mean, yeah. you know, a guy would tell me, and I believe that some guys don't cheat on their wives and do talk, I mean, and a couple guys told me, I, I, I never did it. I said, let me ask you a question. When you're walking with your wife, and I believe you, if that's what you say, and you see this beautiful girl or two walking by, do you ever turn around and check it out? I think every man does, and the thing you is, and that, I'm yeah, tell yeah. You. So that's she, you huh? cheated on you. You're you're fantasizing what this other one is would be like. See, I think so yeah, I cheating. think when you fantasize, and I think you can admire, as long as you don't stare too long, and as long as you don't start like thinking of, of, of uh, fantasizing in your mind about it. I think that's the part when it gets bad because now yeah, you're tipping yeah, yourself. Yeah, but I mean, when you see a beautiful girl, I mean, you're not just admiring her. 
Come on, bro. You you see her, you thinking about <laughs> this this would be beautiful. Bro. And you know what? I can honestly <laughs> say, man, I don't cheat on my wife. No, that's good. But I can admire other women. You well, you want to call it admire or you want to call it fantasize about No, women? I don't think it's fantasize. I might look and say, sometimes my wife may point it out to me. She say, you know you want to look. Because sometimes, you know, I think all guys have the thing that where they, I better not look at her, I'm going to start some shit today. So sometimes I just look straight ahead and my wife and say, you know you want to look, did you see that? Did you see that girl's ass? And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. But that's what she does. You, you didn't see her ass, you didn't see her tits? Yeah, no, I yeah. didn't see them, I don't know what you're talking about. I plead the fifth on that shit because you're not going to get me caught up. Right. That's, as soon as I agree with her, that's when the argument and the bullshit right. is going to start. Right. So you're backing out of that conversation. Oh, no, it. man, you know what? I think just like this, because I can ask my wife the same question. She don't cheat on me either. She's on with me all the time. But if she sees Denzel Washington or Mark Wahlberg or one of them motherfuckers on TV, oh, yeah. girl, oh, you see that guy right there? He's a fine mother, you know? Right, right. <laughs> I, I, think, I think everybody's just as guilty. I, don't, I think yeah, women I, get off the hook too easy. If, if my, if my, if she's my ex-wife now. So if my ex-wife was, like, you know, looking at uh, – who, who am I thinking of? Uh, Mark Wahlberg or, or uh, Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, I, I say, bro, if I was a woman, I'd bang him too. So I don't blame you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you gotta look at it the other way. You look at some Playboy bunny that you're gonna look at. Remember the girl that Trump uh, supposedly had an affair with her? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Then he was denying it and he mm -hmm. got caught in it. So somebody had asked me, well, what would you say? I would take her picture and I would put it there and I'd tell my wife, bro, what do you want me to do? Yeah, you know I what? Mean, and that's the thing, though. Know, what do they call that shit away? in marriage? <laughs> what do they call that shit a hall pass? I think that's why some people get hall passes. And then there's people, you know, there are married people in the freaky shit right now, man. Oh, yeah. You know, you got people that are swingers and everything else, I man. Know. Swingers and everything else, they just invited. And I, I, I couldn't do that shit right there. There ain't no way I would ever invite somebody else to my bedroom. But if not that's even me, it, huh? I'm a little oh no, right not now. even you, Sam. Nobody, <laughs> nobody is coming to my bedroom with me. Right, I'm right, selfish. Right, right. I, I can handle it all by myself. All right, I, I got it. <laughs> you, I just think, you're too so, big to fuck with anybody. <laughs> so I ain't Sammy, doing that shit. You got a lot of stuff going on right now, man. And um, I see you built your media empire. You got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I do. You know, people are starting to see a lot of big things or going to see some even bigger things coming in the near future. Yeah. I'm excited for you, man. Yeah, thank you. I, I thank you so much. I'm working on a thing. They're talking about doing my scripted show. Hmm. One of the hits I did, they're do, thinking about doing a movie with it. I'm actually in contract now, so I really can't talk about what it is, mm -hmm. but I'm in contract with that now. They want to do a documentary about me. And, now, and so we're doing some pretty good things. Now I got... I think 515,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. My subscriber thing is going up. My social media is going up. So I look at that. And I'm, I'm enjoying it. You want to know the truth? I, I don't think I could have got a better thing to change my life and retire to than what I'm doing. I enjoy it. I'm having fun with it. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with a lot of good people. I'm doing inter interviews with guys like you. I wouldn't even imagine... We would pr probably be doing these things, but it's great. I'm dealing with great people. I love this stuff now. And it's, I couldn't think of a better thing to retire. I don't want to sit on a porch or in a rocking chair. I'm 77, but I'm still active. I try to keep myself in good shape. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this is a great time. It's now, what just, do your kids think about, you know, what do your grandkids see about grandpa being a media mogul now? No, they like it. Because they understand all that computer stuff and how to go, you know, they, they like mm -hmm. it. My kids enjoy it. They think, you know, he's having a good time with it. You know, I don't hurt nobody with it. I don't put people down for what they're doing. I talk the truth as much as I can, you know, about certain things, about what's going on in the economy, what's going on in different communities. Mm -hmm. I feel free to just say the truth. And who likes me likes me. Who don't like me don't like me. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with all of that. Well, you still standing though, Sammy, after a whole bunch of stuff, man, after a whole bunch of stuff. You know what I yeah. wonder, has anybody ever, like when you went to witness protection and all that shit, that had to be the boringest shit in the world, huh? It was. I, you know, they begged me to go. I didn't want to go. And what they said, 
Sammy, you, you got five year sentence with 19 murders, the first case. And they said, uh, come on, you're going to make us look horrible by not coming in. And I agreed with them. So I told them, I said, you know what I'll do? I'll give you one year so you look good if that's what you want. One, one year. I wound up giving them eight months. And, uh, and I walked away. It was boring. It was, you know, I, I was in Boulder, Colorado. And I, one thing, I, I'm a people's person. I really am. I hated going to dinner in Boulder, Colorado. It was a college town. Every table's got four, five, six people laughing, talking, drinking. And I'm sitting at the table by myself like a jerk. It just, it all, it, Did anybody ever recognize you? Uh, not then, until I wrote the book. Once I wrote the book, people were recognizing me all over the place. People were recognizing me now. I just coming down on the, the airlines. Mm -hmm. uh, some guy stopped me in, uh, on, in the airport and uh, took a selfie with me and this and that. Yeah, people are recognizing me now. I mean, I don't look like when I was younger. I got old. But now they're starting to recognize me because all the social media now, so even I, it would have with all these other wrinkles and bullshit, they're recognizing me again. So, and and I get a kick out of it. I, I never say no to somebody who wants to do a selfie. I, you know, I feel that uh, they're asking for that, so I do it. You know? That's for sure. So, <clears throat> we had a question that just came in. Are you and Michael Francesi on better terms at the media states of America? Mafia states of America? Yes, yes, we are. We talked. You know, um, we uh, agreed on a lot of things. We might even do, we're talking about doing a show together, just me and him, with no uh, body uh, monitoring the show or, or mediator, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. it. Just me and him. We might t talk about doing a show. But um, we agreed. I'm a gangster, straight out. And he's a racketeer, straight out. Now, Patrick asked me, what's the difference between a gangster and a, a racketeer? Mm -hmm. I said, the best way I can explain it is that a gangster is a t tall, big, very muscular pipo. And a racketeer is a beautiful poodle. <laughs> so Michael Francis said, fuck you. <laughs> but, but I get along, I joke with him. And he jokes with me. I met his family, which made me like him more. He's got mm -hmm. a beautiful family. He's a good father to his children. Uh, and he's a good man all the way around. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's met my family. Uh, he loves my son. My son likes him, really likes him a lot. So there's no hard feelings between me and him. That's some good shit. And we might you... even do some things together. Like I said, we're about to talk about doing a show and because I get a ton of questions like this, he's got a huge following mm -hmm. as well, and and he gets those same questions. So we're talking, we might do a show. Yeah, you know what, I want to ask you, man, because like I said, and I got, we went off into another tangent earlier, I was gonna ask you this earlier, so I watched a lot of gangster stuff, and um, I saw the thing on this hit man, the Ice Man. Yeah. What was the deal with that guy? He's a fucking flake phony piece of shit. I had a case with him. He says that I had killed a cop with him, a cold case, 23 years prior. And I got indicted on the case with him. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing a whole story about him now because he was a fucking flake. He was a liar. You know, the, the cops, the FBI came to me. He said he killed 200 people. He killed two or three people and he killed them for petty shit. 1,500, he robbed the guy, shot him. He was a low life and a liar. And uh, I'm gonna eventually talk about him. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and I was offered a plea, plea out to this murder, this of a cop, cold case. And uh, I had said no. And they said, you know, well, you you're facing 30 to life. If you plea out you'll plea out to the same time you get with the government, which was 20 I got. Mm -hmm. you, you won't do a day, plea, take a plea. We wanna close the case. You could do what the fuck you want. I'm not pleading out to it. <laughs> I, didn't ever, I don't know the guy from a fucking hole in the wall. Um, and I went to trial. 
I went the whole route. And I, they never even got to trial. He got slaughtered. He was caught in 50,000 lies. He said he killed Roy DeMeo. The feds ran right down. Oh, you did that? He, he couldn't give even the slightest detail. So that was fake. Then he admitted he was lying. Then he admitted he was lying about this. And then he was admitted he was lying. It was a fake. And he says he killed, he's another guy. He says he killed 200 people. He tried to make himself bigger than he was. A no, 200 kid. people, that uh, that would make him mm. the, the the biggest mass murderer in the country of all time, probably in the world, wouldn't it? That's why he said 200 people, because he wanted the biggest title. He was a fucking asshole, bro. Yeah, you the would think you gotta a be a bad motherfucker to kill 200 asshole. people, damn. Yeah. 200 people. Yeah, and he died. I'd be honest with you, I like to dig him up, bro. For old time's sake, and shoot his fucking skeleton right in the head. <laughs> 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 Sammy, what's your Instagram on that note, man? <laughs> you know, what's your Instagram, Sammy? Excuse me? What's your Instagram? What's my Instagram? Official Sammy the Bull. Ofi yep. Official Sammy the Bull. You guys make sure y'all go out and follow Official Sammy the Bull. Sammy, man, it's been great as always, man. I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, I appreciate you. I love you, bro. I tell right, you. For sure. I, I appreciate it. Anytime you need me, you know where to get me. Give me a holler. Bang. I'm your man.